Hello, everybody. Thanks for such a great introduction. Some of these things were actually facts. The rest was also semi-facts. So I'm here to talk about Terraform. This is one of uh, project uh, and one of technology which I was using quite actively for the last couple years. Uh, first of all, let me talk about who am I and uh, what I'm passionate about. When I'm not windsurfing or sailing, uh, I actually do coding as well. So AWS technologies, that's what's driving me crazy for the last uh, five years. I decided to organize um, user group uh, meetups in Norway uh, yeah, several years ago. And since then, we had lots of people who dive into Amazon Web Services and try to use them on a daily basis. So it's going pretty actively in Norway now. Uh, I'm also one of organizers of uh, DevOps uh, Days Oslo event, where I still push people towards DevOps and uh, try, to, uh, uh, try to show what is it and try to apply it. So today is my first uh, unemployment day because my contract ends, but I still like to solve problems. So, <laughs> so I hope that uh, DevOps will be everywhere and eventually I will find jobs. So for the last... Uh, uh, as I said, two years, I was using uh, Terraform, and uh, uh, like uh, uh, I was a technical reviewer on one of, uh, not one, but it was the first book about Terraform. And uh, I'm uh, very active in Terraform uh, community, so I'm, I'm uh, administrator and maintainer of uh, probably more than half of Terraform community modules. So I will talk about uh, it uh, later on. I'm also uh, seeing Terraform as a big and uh, massive amount of uh, technologies and ecosystem and community. So I try to stay active within uh, open source uh, and be an active contributor on different projects. So one of these is Terraform module generator, uh, which I have just released uh, recently. And there will be much more uh, in pipeline, so stay tuned. You can find me on LinkedIn and uh, GitHub. So goals of this talk, um, I wrote them here, you can see them. But uh, uh, half hour is not enough to talk about Terraform, that's certainly. I mean, <laughs> it's big and it's interesting technology and it solves lots of problems. But uh, I'd like to talk about uh, Terraform as being part of delivery pipeline. Uh, Sorry that I, I may, may be mixing words like CD and uh, CI and continuous delivery, continuous deployment, continuous integration, and I often call it as CI CD because it's hard to figure out, oh, are we talking about CD now or are we talking about CD version 2? <laughs> there are two CDs, right? So uh, let's get started. So, first of all, uh, who of you are actually uh, uh, knowing what is, let's say, infrastructure as code? Just raise your hands. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, actually, the full. Cool. So right place to be. So what about deployment pipelines? Oh, almost the same amount of people. So yeah, that's good. I was afraid that people will be not raising hands, and then I have to delete the whole presentation and uh, talking about basics. Cool, so then what about pipeline as code? Exactly, same amount of people, because you eventually write this as code, right? That's. So in this talk, uh, there will be two technologies. Both of them are uh, uh, created and sports sponsored by HashiCorp. One is Terraform, which is the main one, which is a tool to write, plan, and apply infrastructure changes. And another one is Packer. Packer is a tool to build automated machine images like uh, AMI in Amazon or virtual box images and so on. Uh, both of these tools apply uh, infrastructure as code, as core principles, as well as a few other things like immutability. So what we want to do, probably deploy infra. How we do it? You get it right. Deployment pipeline. But why? So. First of all, how typical uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline looks like. You check in some code or developers check in some code. You execute some very easy tests on it, like unit tests. You package some artifact. You 
uh, you promote it to another uh, stage or another environment, you run more uh, throat tests, or like functional tests, and you verify that, yes, it makes sense to promote it even further, and you pass it through different environments. So eventually, if you want to do continuous deployment, then this code which developers just wrote will land in production. That's the end goal. Otherwise, we don't have to write any code at all. So, but uh, 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 CD pipelines, they give you a clear um, uh, idea about potential bottlenecks which will occur uh, in the runtime or in, uh, with this code. So as often and as fast you can get this feedback is better. So you get more uh, certainly that code is actually what you want because it passed all these tests and yes, let's release it. So this is how typical uh, CI CD pipeline looks like. Uh, infrastructure changes is uh, if the deployment of new version of application or changing your infrastructure resources, uh, they can happen along the way. They can happen literally on any of these phase. And uh, there are uh, many different ways to, uh, to implement them on different stages. But uh, on this talk, I will be uh, uh, talking just about Terraform and how it can be used here. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, kind of shameless plug for Circle CI 2.0 here, but uh, it can be Jenkins or Travis or anything else. This is just my preferred tool of uh, choice, which is free for many use cases. And it also allows infrastructure uh, as well as pipeline to be in the code, so that this uh, uh, pipeline is uh, literally a single YAML file. So as you can see here, I, I run uh, some sort of unit tests, I validate infrastructure, I build AMI, I plan it, approve, and once it's what I want, then I apply this into production or into other environment. So that's uh, basic things. Structuring about Terraform code is something what lots of people don't uh, pay attention to, or they think that uh, I can treat my code uh, later. I don't care. I mean, that's my application code. That's my source. Uh, I need EC2 instance. For those who don't know, this is uh, the most basic way of uh, giving virtual servers in Amazon Web Services. So they will think about this after they actually write code. That's fine for small projects. But as your project grows, there will be more uh, need to either uh, separate your application code from your infrastructure code or make some sort of decisions. So uh, it's important to take into account that, yes, you will have to make these decisions. But at the same time, you don't have to overcomplicate it and create 20 different resources as we can see here, uh, you can do this later. So one of common um, uh, pattern, I would say, is that uh, uh, infrastructure uh, repository can be split into several, let's say, folders. It can be even several repositories. That's not, uh, that's not the biggest uh, challenge. What's important is that you're, you treat your uh, your infrastructure and later we'll see pipeline as code so that everything is documented, everything is repeatable, uh, most of these things are immutable, and so on. So to do this, uh, uh, as shown on the right side, uh, it's pretty good uh, pattern to, uh, to structure your code like this. So. Uh, uh, I saw lots of hands of people who know what is infrastructure as code, uh, terminology means. Uh, so here I'm just showing how the basic Terraform template looks like. So this template is uh, very basic. It just creates bucket and it puts object into this bucket and output. Uh, as I show on the right column, there are three commands, Terraform, init, plan, and apply. Essentially, this is all what you need to know uh, if you get started. So if there are people who are curious after this talk, like, hey, it sounds cool, but uh, I know there is magic sauce which you don't show in this presentation. Like, you literally have to uh, set several environment variables, install Terraform. It's all straightforward, and it's all done for you. So installation, brew install, or any other way of installation. 
and then you plan, you see what's going to be changed, and apply means you apply this code. So this works just like that for situations where you have one file or small file and no need to think about how to change this code over time. Let's say how to promote this between different environments, development stage and production and so on. So let's just get in started and get basic impression. And more sophisticated examples, uh, people tend to use uh, tools like Packer, which is building a complete image. It, it, one of good practice is to build uh, immutable machine images uh, every commit or when your code is merged into, let's say, uh, master branch or so, or when you are about to perform more complicated testing. So, and uh, Packer and Terraform, they both follow uh, they are both products from the same company, so it's pretty easy to get started with two of them. Uh, in particular, in this example, I'm showing that configuration file app.json is creating uh, AMI with specific name, which is then discovered by Terraform using data, data source uh, called AWS AMI. So it was, it was probably not so revolu revolutional yet. Let's look into FTP. FTP is, you, you all know what is FTP, right? So no, FTP is frequent Terraform problems. That's what a kind of new definition of FTP, because nobody uses FTP anymore, no, but FTP is still there. So one of uh, common problems which I see, uh, especially being as a maintainer of uh, Terraform community modules, I see uh, that it's very easy to get started with writing Terraform code. That's very uh, good um, starting point for many people. They just get started in one hour and think that they are done. But in fact, they put problems into the code. So one of these is that uh, they tend to hard code values uh, just, just because it's the easiest way. Because they go to console and they see this ID and they put it back and that's problem number one. So really, using data sources or uh, at least tfvars file for discovering these values is very good practice. And second, uh, as we uh, are going to manage more and more resources into the cloud and create more ephemeral resources over time, it's very important to keep track of these resources. So tagging is uh, significantly uh, a significant step to uh, improve and to make code uh, easier traceable, I would say. So if you have uh, many resources and you have to put all of this into, uh, into your code yourself, it's tedious work and it's very easy to make errors because you forget to tag something or you forget to use data sources uh, to change values. So as a solution to reusability code is Terraform modules. So Terraform module is essentially the uh, block uh, of, um, it's a logical block of uh, resources which uh, you can uh, use to increase uh, code reusability and improve code structure. We do this a lot uh, when we write code ourselves. So why don't do this for infrastructure? So Terraform modules can be versioned and uh, they're, uh, they can be private or public, so you can, uh, when you start working on uh, your internal projects, only you know what kind of uh, architecture you're going to use. So if it's going to be uh, specific requirements for your services, then you can make it as an individual uh, module and uh, keep it closed for yourself. You don't have to publish it officially. You can, what's mo even more important is that you have to version it and you have to uh, tell your application team that uh, they have to stick to specific versioning. So semantic versioning is still applicable for infrastructure. That's, uh, so that's a cool part of uh, infrastructure as code, is that lots of things are not new. I mean, we were writing code for not for one year, right? So we were writing it for many, many different situations. So apply the same for infrastructure is cool, and it helps 
as I said, code reusing and encapsulating groups of resources. And eventually, it will be easier to perform testing of it. So I have some demo, and I also have internet. Uh, let's see if internet is working well. Mm. So I'd like to demo two things. First of all, uh, do you see this well? No. Like this. OK. So this is how uh, workflow looks like. Uh, you can, yeah. So there are several steps, and uh, all of them are configured in the code, uh, as, as I can show. Yeah, that's it. So the pipeline configuration is in single YAML file, and it has definition of different jobs where I uh, just describe what kind of commands I want to run. And at the end, there is workflow where I tie all of them together into chain, or it can be parallel execution, or it can be sequential execution. Uh, so at this pipeline, I'm performing some Terraform-related things, like I'm validating Terraform configurations uh, file on validate infrastructure phase. And my uh, configuration for the Terraform looks, looks, like, looks like this. So here I'm using module security group, which is hosted on uh, Terraform community modules. Uh, uh, organization, and I want to use specific version 0.2.3, and this means that all of my infrastructure is now using just this version, and when developers will release new version and they think I should be using, so I will change this figure here. That's, that's an easy way of uh, following specific versions. And then there is app.json, which looks Pretty, pretty similar to what I showed on the slides, where I create AMI with this name and run several provisioners, and that's, that's it. So as the next step, step, I run plan infrastructure, and I can show output of it. So the most interesting step here is Terraform plan. Uh, me being as a developer, I want to know what kind of changes are going to happen. So I see this. Uh, pretty nice uh, Terraform plan output where I can see that new AMI is going to be uh, is going to be used so it forces to create new resource and since this is exactly what I wanted to do mm, I click approve infrastructure so this is manual step which comes here and once I approve it then it applies just this um, uh, just this change which I talked about. So it destroyed previous resource and it launched a new one with correct AMI. And at the end, it outputs this IP address. So I can go to this IP. If I didn't kill this instance, then it should be here, yes. So this means that build number 248 was a result of Packer build. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Uh, I want to go back to the presentation and actually talk about some more thoughts about, about this thing before I uh, can accept questions. So let's see. Mm -hmm. So it's loading. OK, that's very promising. Uh, can you see this? Yeah, you can see this. <laughs> Let's pretend that I click present and it works. So uh, yeah, uh, Terraform is, as I said, really, really, really biggest and really growing project. So there are lots of GitHub uh, tools uh, 
created by pretty cool people and pretty cool companies outside of HashiCorp. So it's very easy to get started and people just tend to fill in missing parts. Uh, so one of these projects which uh, people created, or at least one guy created and some other contribute, was tflint, which allows you to validate your code and make sure that you put actually sane results, there, sane values there, like security group ports and uh, IP addresses of VPC and so on. So I encourage you to use tflint as a, as a starting point to make sure that uh, since it's the fastest and very easy to, uh, to execute, you have to execute it as early as possible into your pipeline. Also paying attention to code st uh, coding styles and apply Terraform FMT is, is pretty good uh, practice as well, just so that the code which is written by you is not different by code written by someone else in your company or even by other uh, people in the community. So that's pretty important as well. Um, and uh, um, yeah, uh, and there are several projects which, uh, even on this conference and before, uh, when I talk to people and hear them, yeah, but we can use CloudFormation, uh, or we've been using CloudFormation for many years. Why should we jump into this one? And uh, we're not going to to jump away from AWS in the near future, so why should we invest time into using this? So, like, uh, one of my favorite answers, one of my favorite answers, which was my favorite, uh, was that, hey, you can run Terraform plan and see what's going to be changed. Now that's not relevant because you can see the same in cloud formation. But uh, still, my main, main uh, kind of sales pitch why you should be using Terraform is that uh, it accept, uh, it, it, it's not forcing you to write some strange code like YAML or like uh, JSON or use another development concept uh, to generate this code. It's asking you to write plain Terraform templates, which are very easy to understand. They have built-in validation, built-in formatting, and not type checking, but uh, they allow to get started much easier. And second thing why, why people prefer to not use or not even look into Terraform because it doesn't have graphical user interface. Yeah, of course it doesn't have because it's all in the code, and infrastructure is code is actually against you clicking in console and uh, trying to be smart and not put everything into the code. So uh, there is a tool called Atlantis by uh, Hootsuite. So this is one tool which, uh, which is getting popular and it's getting more attention now. And uh, it's uh, one of that tool which is missing in tool chain when it comes to orchestration and executing Terraform uh, in delivery pipeline. So I really encourage you to look into that one. Uh, Terraform itself provides some uh, built-in concepts for working with complex environments. So there is concept of Terraform workspaces, uh, but uh, I honestly couldn't figure out why it's so important and why it's cool. So to be honest, I don't recommend this one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's there and it's possible to think about your code as uh, uh, separate environments, but uh, it's pretty hard to get started and very easy to break things. So if you want to break something, then it's very easy to get it wrong. Uh, and uh, Terragram is another one, uh, is a product which uh, started uh, to fulfill missing parts of Terraform back in the days and uh, just, uh, uh, just after um, one year or so, they found their specific niche into uh, making it easier for you to write uh, code and following don't repeat yourself pattern. So that Terragrant is forcing you or is giving you tools, giving you ways to write Terraform code, which you can apply for different regions, for different environments, uh, using different conditions. Uh, but uh, yeah, it still doesn't uh, 
doesn't give you the full power of what programming language can do for you. Uh, so second, not second, but one more thing which people often uh, expect Terraform to give to them is that I want to create a list of instances in a loop. So I want to have real programming uh, concepts implemented in Terraform. So no, it's not possible to do use a native HCL, but there are tools like JSONnet, or you can use your favorite programming language to generate Terraform code, and so on. So look into Terraform as not a full-featured programming language. That's important to understand. It's a tool which allows you to plan, apply infrastructure, and using community tools, you can uh, easily fulfill the remaining bits. And if you are all into Terraform already and want to promote your, uh, your usage of Terraform in the company and uh, see that uh, it's not so easy going because people are reluctant to accept this change, uh, I, I would suggest to just uh, read official documentation where they have very nice comparison between AWS and Terraform, for example. It, it, it's very hard to explain in this talk. But uh, that's it from me. So if you have any questions, I would really, really love MC to come. <laughs> Thank you, Anton. We have quite a few questions. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, the first one, just a simple one. Someone was asking what the UI was that was in there. I think it was Circle CI. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just tell people a bit about what Circle CI is for those of them that haven't yeah. seen it before? Yeah. So Circle CI is a SaaS uh, solution for continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. Uh, so this, what I showed, was a second version of Circle CI, which was released, I think, like a couple months ago, maybe three months ago, I don't remember. And it allows to put everything into the code, and uh, uh, you don't have to manage your own CI system. So I see lots of people struggling with traditional DevOps tool set, but uh, it's not for me, so I use something what I don't have to manage. Next talk will be about something what we don't have to manage. <laughs> yeah. um, and I guess similar to that is, uh, why is Terraform better than something like uh, Salt Stack or Puppet? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty often comparison between these technologies. So uh, 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 how to say? So first of all, it's uh, easy to get started uh, with syntax, being able to see what's going to be implemented, and uh, large amount of modules and potentially high quality of modules in Terraform than in Puppet or Chef or I don't know about SaltStack, but mm -hmm. quality, that's something what Terraform community is strive for. So if you are using Terraform, you potentially should have uh, predictable quality. Uh, unfortunately, with Puppet and on my own experience, that's not the case. So you go to Puppet Forge, and which of hundreds of, I don't know, Ubuntu modules you have to use? It's hard to find the best one. With Terraform, there are fewer options. Okay. But uh, uh, the biggest difference uh, between these two, two, or not, two groups of tools, like Terraform versus everything else, is that uh, everything else was not written for infrastructure in first mm -hmm. place. It was written for configuration management and infrastructure management and deployment mm -hmm. and doing everything at once. Okay. And Terraform is just for uh, managing your infrastructure as code in okay. a repeatable way and getting predictable output. Um, someone asked, uh, is this uh, an AWS only solution or does it work on things like Azure or Google or other clouds? Yeah, so uh, Terraform doesn't have any affiliation with uh, AWS, mm, same as me. I don't uh, think you mentioned that I work with, Terraf with uh, AWS, but in fact, I use AWS servers. I'm not affiliated with AWS. So yes, uh, Terraform can be used to manage 
uh, around 50 different types of resources, including cloud providers, DNS uh, management systems, uh, Docker, Kubernetes, and all these kind of mm -hmm. platforms are available. Once you figure out the basic of uh, how to create uh, Terraform code, how to structure it effectively, uh, you should be able to pick up and apply the same for Azure or Google Cloud. Okay. The difference of implementation is sometimes significant. So it's, it's uh, usually following the demand that uh, as more people are asking about uh, AWS specific features, mm -hmm. it gets more attention and it will be implemented faster. Mm -hmm. So if you have any difficulties, go into uh, GitHub, uh, open an issue, and it will definitely sparkle some attention, some discussion, okay. and uh, potentially your problem will be implemented and released not uh, at the next um, major version, but it can be released literally next day. So. Um, uh, an AWS-specific question about that. Have you had any success managing uh, IAM users and IAM roles in AWS? Yeah, yeah. So with Terraform, it's uh, possible to manage uh, I would say 90% of uh, resources which you, which you have access through console or okay. through API. So, and uh, I am group policy, password policies, uh, all these access keys and all security stuff is very well covered there. So it's part of uh, uh, offering since, uh, I don't know, at least uh, one and a half year. Okay. So it's, it's, have, it's using very actively. Okay. Uh, a couple more technical questions. Um, where do you keep the uh, Terraform state file? What type of locking do you use? Do you set it up so CircleCI can only uh, have one deployment run at a time? Questions like that. Yeah, uh, yeah starting from the, <clears throat> from the last question is actually easier. So Atlantis by Hootsuite takes responsibility for executing single... Uh, s s single um, S single, how to say, yeah, so executing a single copy of it. Mm -hmm. So if you have multiple pull requests uh, with all of them changing uh, Terraform configurations, uh, you, you really have to merge them one after another. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Atlantis by Hootsuite will prevent you from doing that. So Atlantis will not allow you to merge all at once and then try to solve the problem. So Atlantis is one of solution. For, uh, for that one. When it comes to managing state between, uh, uh, if you have complex uh, infrastructure, you, you have to manage state uh, outside of your laptop. Mm -hmm. And most common choice and the easiest to implement is S3, where a file is uploaded at the end of each execution uh, and it's versioned. So you can roll back to previous version. You can see what exactly has changed uh, this period of time. Uh, natively, there are no tools which can show you what exactly has changed from this commit to that commit, mm -hmm. but uh, there are some other tools which you can use. Uh, so right now, Terraform provides lots of, uh, lots of features which you need or may need. I don't think I can imagine what I'm missing right now uh, from Terraform uh, point of view, or maybe I know where to look for it. Okay. So that's... That's great. There's a couple more questions in Slack that maybe you can answer later that I think are a bit too technical for now. But uh, yeah, if you've got any more questions, I know some people have used this and played and got some questions, please do come and find Anton in, outside in one of the breaks and have a chat. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause to Anton. Thanks.